What's up guys, welcome back to the 1973 Honda CB504 Cafe Racer build. got a lot going on in the shop today. I've got my freshly painted wheels up here. I painted these with an engine enamel paint and then I baked them in my homemade easy bake oven. If you want to see that stuff hit the link up here or down in, in the description. But this video is all about mounting the new tires on them and also putting new brake shoes in the rear, new bearings and seals front and back and just reassembling everything because we are getting ready to reassemble this bike. If you've been keeping up with this build series, then you would know that I already picked up these Shinko E240 and E270 Super Classic tires. These are really cool looking, but they actually don't even match. The front E240 tire looks different than the rear one. That was the only configuration I would get that I thought would fit my wheels but they don't even fit the wheels because the rear one is a four by 18, which means it's four inches wide. And the CB500 wheel is only 1.85 inches wide. So the biggest tire you can put on is a 3.5 by 18 for the rear. So what I did instead is pick up these IRC GS11 tires, which I don't think will look quite as cool, but they're still pretty classic looking. All I wanted was something that looked like it belonged on this vintage bike. So I think these IRC GS11 tires will do just that. And they also have a little better tread if you're gonna be on dirt roads or gravel roads. So it's kind of a win-win. So yeah, enough talking. We gotta get these wheels prepped and then mount the new tires on them. Let's get it. Woo! Normally, I would set these tires outside if it was a nice hot sunny day to get them nice and warmed up so they slip onto the wheels easier, but it's not a nice sunny day. It's cloudy and rainy. So I'm gonna try to use my Easy Bake oven. Uh-oh. I definitely didn't design this to fit tires in, but I think with the heat gun right in the whole center hole here, We'll be able to warm up the inside of these tires, get them nice and nice and softening up. All right, I'm just gonna keep my heat gun on low heat just to warm up these tires a little bit. Now, while the tires are warming up, I've got some work to do on these wheels. First of all, I have to clean out the inside brake shoe surface. Now I'm just going to take some sandpaper and just lightly scuff up that breaking surface. Oh yeah, I feel a lot better about that as a breaking surface. Alright, now we've got to remove the old wheel bearings. I'm not sure what the best way to do that is, but there's a spacer in between these two bearings, so I'm just gonna try to tap on the lip of that spacer. Maybe it'll tap the other bearing out. Bigger hammer, that was my problem. Oh, finally. Yeah, that's old grease. Now we just have to get this bearing out. I'm gonna use a socket and an extension. There it is. That one was a lot easier. I'm almost positive that I'm gonna have to reuse this piece inside the bearing. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought I was gonna have to 
get it out with a hammer and a punch, but it came right out. Now onto the front wheel. We've got to remove this bearing retainer in order to remove the bearings. I'm gonna use this punch for that and see if it'll loosen up. Oh yeah, it's moving easily. All right, cool, gotta get these bearings out. There we go. And we have this little spacer, same as the back one. There we go. Well, there it is. Okay, this guy just... Oh, okay. Now I can put the rubber pieces back into the rear Cush Drive hub. And then there's this O-ring. Gonna put just a little bit of motor oil on that O-ring. And now this hub can go back in. I just pulled the bearings out of the freezer. They are really cold. They're ready to go in. I'll just tap these in nice and easy. Got the perfect socket. Let's tap these bearings in. Sides all the way in. I'll flip it over. The other bearing. Now onto the rear wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and put the spacer in sizes. Can't find anything big enough to tap this in with, but I do have the old bearing, so I'm just going to use that. All right, it's bottomed out. Nice. Let's flip it over and get this side in. Ah, uh, forgot to put this freaking little thing in there. Dang it. Okay, luckily I was able to get that bearing out without damaging it. Now, I'm gonna put in this little spacer piece. Okay, now this bearing can go in. Okay, there we go. Got the new bearings in place. Now the retainer for the rear bearing goes in. There's an O-ring, just a touch of motor oil on the threads and on that O-ring, make sure everything slides into place. And then just a few light taps. And then the rear sprocket. I think the spacer goes in now. Need a little bit of oil on this seal. And now this can go on. Nice. Then these little things go on. And the nuts. Click. Click. Then I'm gonna bend these tabs up. There, and that locks those nuts in place. Okay, and onto this side, let's get the brake installed. All right, there's just a little bit of rust on the brake shoe pins there, so I got that all cleaned up. Now it's time to install the new brake shoes. I have to use the old springs, unfortunately, but nice new grooved brake shoes. Next, this little fixing plate goes on. 
Then these cotter pins go in to hold the new brake shoes in place. Give it a quick test. Yeah. Looking good. Let's get it on the wheel. It works. Now the front wheel bearing retainer can go back in. And now to lock this retaining clip in, I'm gonna take a punch and... Okay, three of those along the edges and that'll lock the retaining clip in place. Now we can reinstall the front brake disc. And then on this side, this piece goes on first. There's supposed to be an O-ring in there, but I don't have it. So I put some RTV silicone in there and now we're gonna put this piece on and then the bolts go in. And then these little lock washer plates and the nuts. Okay, good to go. Just gonna leave those finger tight for now because I do have that RTV silicone on this side. Now there's just one last thing to do before we can get the tires on these wheels and that is put on a new rim strip. And then stretch it onto place. There we go. And then I have the same exact rim strip for the rear wheel. You can actually do the 19 inch rim strip for an 18 inch wheel as well. We are ready for some new tires. All right, I'm gonna start with the front wheel. I've got my soapy water here in a spray bottle. This is gonna help me lubricate the tire so that it slides on nicely. Pro Tracks, heavy duty, three millimeter thick tube here. It's 19 by four. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of air in this tube. good just enough so that it holds its shape and the last time I made a video changing tires a ton of people were saying the first nut goes inside the wheel so I'm gonna do that this time the first nut inside the wheel and then the second nut will be outside the wheel I've got my front tire out of the oven it's ready to go and there is the yellow mark right there that means that's the heavy side of the tire so we want that opposite of the valve stem. We're gonna put the tube inside the tire. And the tube also, both sides. Now I'm gonna put my wheel in, get the valve stem nut into the wheel. Now I'm gonna put the valve stem nut on the valve stem so that stays in place. I've got my tire spoons all ready to go here and kind of just press the wheel into the tire mostly. Flip it around. We need some more soapy water in there. Then I'm gonna just get a couple of tire spoons in there. There we go. There's half the tire on already. Luckily, this is a non-directional tire. I didn't even check that, but I got lucky. Now, let's get this side on the wheel. A little more soapy water, can't hurt. And I get my tire spoons in first and foremost. Okay, start cranking it down. Get my other tire spoons in. Woo, all right. That was pretty easy. So the fact that it went that easily makes me think I didn't pinch the tube. I don't know until I fill it up with air. Well, I'm at 10 PSI. I don't hear any leaks, so that's a good sign. All right, 20 PSI and no leaks. Now I can go ahead and tighten down that valve stem nut. Nice, the cap. 
Rear tire actually is directional, so I'm going to have to make sure I put it on the right way. Same as last time. Alright, so the sprocket's supposed to be on the left side of the bike, like this. So that means that, like this, yep, you guys know the drill. Let's speed this thing up. Alright, I'm getting pretty good at that. There's 10 PSI. Alright, 20 PSI. Now I can tighten down that valve stem nut. Just tight enough. And then I'll cap it off. Woo! It's the next day and both tires are still holding air, which means I did not pinch the tubes. So that's good. And now I'm gonna show you how, how I balance my wheels just with two jack stands and the axle. I'm gonna be using some steel adhesive wheel weights. These are powder coated. These are really nice wheel weights. I've used them before. I'll put a link to these up here or down in the description. All you need, two jack stands and a little level just to make sure your axle is level. So the wheel has to be level for balancing. I did have to put a little magnet under the axle on this side. Now that we are level, we're gonna give her a spin. And it's about to stop. Usually it's where the valve stem is, but I mounted the tires with the heavy side of the tire offset of the valve stem. So it seems like they're pretty balanced already. Just to show you guys that this definitely works, I'm gonna take a little stack of magnets here and it's not that heavy. We'll toss it right where the valve stem is. See, it's already moving to the bottom. And then we'll take it off. Seems like the heavy side is right around somewhere where the valve stem is. Maybe a little bit to the left of the valve stem. Then take just one of these weights and put it right here. All right, now let's give it a spin again and see where it lands this time. Okay, that time it landed like kind of almost with the weight on the bottom, but not quite, so that's actually good. That tells me that this wheel is balanced now. That's it. I'm gonna do the same exact thing with the rear wheel now. I noticed something kind of weird about the rear axle when I was balancing it. It's kind of loose inside the bearing. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I mean, these bearings are definitely, definitely the right ones for this bike. Well guys, that is gonna be it for this video. I've got the new tires mounted up on the wheels and uh, the wheel paint held up pretty good. There's a couple little spots where obviously the tire spoon, you know, prying so hard to get the tire on, I messed up a little bit of the paint on the wheels, but there were a couple spots that needed touched up anyway, so once the bike's all assembled, I'm gonna definitely do go around, do some touch up painting with a foam brush, and then maybe some wet sand it, smooth it all back together. It's gonna look really good when it's all done. This build's going really well so far. Also, I've got my wooden gas tank here. The paint job just came out so cool, and I thought a lot more people were not gonna like it, but I haven't really had anyone that didn't like it yet, so. That's awesome. I'm gonna paint the side covers of the bike once I get them, uh, the same wood grain color. And then I might also paint the fenders this way, but let me know down in the comments below what you think I should do with the fenders. I might just do them black, do the side covers and tank with a wood grain look. But let me know what you guys think down below. We are getting very close to reassembling this bike maybe even next week. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you enjoying this project. It means a lot to me to see people still interested in my videos, so I can't, I can't thank you guys enough. If you want to stay in the loop and don't miss out on any more of my videos, then you can hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the reassembly of this bike coming very soon. Also, like the video if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think of these IRC GS11 tires. I'm kind of bummed I didn't get to do the Shinko tires, but 
I think these will ride a lot better anyways, so let me know if you've used them or not in the comments down below or any else, anything else you want to tell me. <laughs> and uh, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.